sure this is correct. All right. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm here with two-time champion Brett Codwell. Nice to have you here. Um, he had a pretty terrible week last week, in all honesty. Uh, we got a new poll question this week. Brett was nice enough to make poll last week while I was sick. You need oh. everybody to check it. I agree for sure. We had 11 people vote, though, which is pretty good, but there's 14 of us, so... Let's get those numbers a little higher. Um, if you missed last week's poll question, it was who you thought had the best draft. Draft. Uh, Brett led the poll with three votes. That, that make you feel good? Make me feel real good, Chuck. <laughs> well, you finished 13th in power ranking, so you shouldn't feel too good. Um, I think Callie and Austin both had two votes. Yes, Austin. And I'm pretty sure me and you both voted on Cali. Yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah, I did as well. So whoever voted for me, I appreciate you. My, my one lone vote. But this week's poll question is, who was the biggest surprise of week one? Brandon being top of power rank rankings. Whoa. Is that a big surprise to you? Surprise. Hey, you never know, man. Let's go. Uh, Brett being 13th in power, that's a shocker to me since he was highest voted on last week's poll, and it's Brett. He usually doesn't have bad weeks. Um, Austin being third in power is a big shocker to me because he had the worst year ever last year, ever in this league, and he had a really good week one. I know you wasn't here last year, but Austin did worse than Brandon from the year before that. I heard rumors. It was, it was pretty bad. Uh, Runner-up Santana from last year, 12th in power rankings. Um, can't expect that from uh, someone that was in the championship game last year. So that's a pretty surprise. And then you know, have to show myself some love being second in power. Um, everyone was there for the draft. I drafted five people and sat in the back of the room for the rest of the day. So, to be second was, was pretty good, but I'm going to go with Brandon being on top of power. Um, the way Brett made it sound is that that's how he is voting as well, but I don't know because I'm not Brett. Surprise. Well, who are you going to vote for, boss? Whenever I was looking at Brandon's team, at first I didn't think it was that great, um, especially looking at it right now. Um, Will Barton specifically, averaging three threes, five five, two and a half assists, one steal, 19 points over two games. Obviously, that's massive. Giannis is playing, I mean, second to Russell's last year's MVP run, but yeah. Josh Jackson is second. But, I mean, Karis LeVert was a good pickup. Willie Collins time playing good. Uh, Robin Lopez being like consistent average dude as normal. Uh, things are just going good. He's got KD, Evan Fournier's playing all right. Even Spencer, even Spencer Dinwiddie is giving him a couple of assists. I mean, hey, he made some good moves. Yeah, he's made some. He's he's definitely made some really good pickups. But it's just a big surprise to me because Brandon had a better year last year than his rookie year. But you know, no one talked about his team post draft, and just to see him. I don't know, just performed so well week one, it's just a big surprise. But let's go on to last week since, you know, that's what we're talking about. Um, we'll start off with my matchup with rookie Dominic. Um, uh, it wasn't that close. We had maybe a couple categories that could have switched, but it was definitely all me. And, you know, it, it's a rookie, so, I mean, he got his first game out of the way, so we'll see how he does in week two. Anything on your end on that matchup? No, I mean, he has a decent start to his team, just definitely needs to have a couple guys that are just throwing out some useless stuff like Norman Powell. And, uh, I don't know, I'm, I've never been a fan of Dion Waiters, even though he can score. But. Well, if you look, a, a lot of teams have a bunch of trash players on their team, but just some of those trashier players are just overperforming, I would say. Yeah. I would say I have several of those right now overperforming, but... I have big names that are under, that are looking <laughs> worse than that. That you are with old Marvin Williams. Uh, we'll we'll move on to uh, if if I had to pick up a matchup of the week from last week, this would have been it because it's a uh, it's the championship game from last year. You couldn't ask for a better week one matchup. Sean playing Santana. Santana even named his team name from last year, the Redemption. Well, you didn't redeem yourself in this game, buddy. You got beat nine two one. Um, it was it looks like it's all Sean. Um, I looked at the matchup. Santana, I think had seven less players play than Sean. Um, I think Santana's got a few players that he could drop and potentially make some pickups, but that's just what I see. But not a very good week one for Santana. 
I can uh, the one thing I can say, Sean is looking to trade uh, Rodney Hood and Lou Williams from the offers that I've been getting. Well, if he wants some high quality for those. <laughs> well, Lou will might be might be worth owning right now, if you were to ask me. Six assists, 15 points. Uh, hey, hey, I'll take that. Who will? <laughs> Who will? We'll move on to uh, Austin playing Cody. Um, big trash talker and Cody always thinks he uh, is the best team. Um, gets beat by Austin. Um, like I mentioned in the poll, one of the worst teams last year. Uh, big surprise from Austin. Had a fantastic week. I, I told him midway through the draft that he was doing much better drafting-wise, but I didn't know it was going to be this good, so maybe his team will continue to stay that way. And Cody didn't really have that good of a week. He's pretty uh, quiet in the regular season, so I don't know how he will fare in the regular season. You may want to change that name from the no names. The same going with Steph Curry, Reggie Jackson, Kyle Gasol, Dwight, Jimmy Cousins, D. Rose. Maybe you want to change it to the big names. After <laughs> yeah, not the no names. The top three, I don't know. And then you know we got all freaks and geeks here, freaks and Greeks that don't even have the Greek. So I mean, we might want to change that one too if we're talking names. Yeah, let's just, uh, let's just name updates. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> freaks and Greeks doesn't even have Giannis. One of the one of the really good matchups last week, the Metapods and Victor. I love that team name for some reason. Nice. Did you see his picture? Yeah, he has the heart. <laughs> that that is just funny. And then uh, it's supposed to be Team Well. I'm pretty sure, but he's got some uh, funny asterisks in his team name. So we'll go with Team Afa is Brett worded it in the poll. It's supposed to be a well emoji, but it, it changes over time. It just makes it worse. <laughs> yeah, a fell emoji for sure. Um, it was a fantastic matchup. Uh, Brandon took it 6-4-2. Uh, both teams played really well. Both were really high on power. As Paul said, Brandon was number one. Um, <sighs> looking at Victor's team... He didn't draft poorly, but if you would have looked at how he ended the draft, it was very poorly. He ended up going Seth Curry, Vince Carter, Patty Mills, Joe Johnson, and MKG. MKG, I guess, ain't the worst, but the injured draft that way and can still have a good week. I guess that's pretty good. Vince Carter is on a squad. <laughs> hey, man, he did drop uh, Moskov, though. Yeah, that was good. I, I, don't, <coughs> I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. He's, uh, he, Cody having Trevor Booker. That's just lucky, or if he thought he was going to get those minutes, because they said Mozgov was definitely starting, but Trevor Booker definitely taking advantage of that spot. Yeah, he is, no doubt about that. And then um, our second rookie here struggles in uh, week one, Kyle. Team Nance, that's a that's a fantastic name if we're talking names. Let's get the name changes. Um, and then Mellow Hood and Friends and Heath. Um, you would have thought by looking at this in 9 3 Heath had a dominating week, but... Spoiler alert, he really didn't. Um, it's just he played Kyle. And Kyle, I guess, is the new Austin from last year. So, just by week one, looking at it. So, uh, I thought Heath's team did well until I did power. So, I don't know. Good win, I guess. Not 3 0. Yeah, definitely. He does. I think Carmelo's rebounds are really down. Who, which I think should go up. And then I thought it was interesting. Uh, Heath Week 1 had to play against Russell Westbrook, his favorite player. I, I'm sure that was uh, not very fun to watch. Well, Russell was not doing last year Russell things to him. So. Nah, but he got a triple-double the first game. Oh, sure, absolutely. Absolutely. And then we got uh, Josh and Callie, a uh, fantastic matchup, a tie here in Week 1. Yeah, yeah, it did. I mean, they tied in blocks. Uh, Callie beat Josh by three points. This was this was a good matchup. Uh, free throw percent, no, nah, free throw percentage was not close. So if anyone could have got just another block, or you know, Josh could have came back in points, you know. Yeah, Josh was ahead by three steals. I mean, thirteen O boards is kind of high, but it was ahead by six three pointers. I mean, it could have gone either way. Oh, it it category. it did. I mean, they both had pretty good weeks, um, top half, anyways. So it's just weird seeing a tie. I need that in another category. No. I'm just playing. I don't need no. to, but man, good good weeks to both, especially since Callie lost Hayward the very first game to still tie someone and have a good week is pretty impressive. I mean, that's an $111 player she drafted to lose. This, oh, yeah. So that, that sucks, and especially a hot caliber player like Hayward is. But good matchup across the board by those two. Any side notes? No. Okay. 
And then the last uh, matchup here, you got a uh, holiday season. Um, person beside me got destroyed by uh, Rusty seven four one. How you gonna I lose? Go How you gonna lose the Rusty? Bro, all right, six points, one double double. Two steals down. I mean, hey, take it how you, take how you want. Your team shot terrible. Yeah, my team shot 41%, 76%, but I ain't here to, I ain't here to say what I could have done. Sure, I sure. I think, I, th I mean, <clears throat> for Rusty to beat you 7-4-1, his team played terrible. Yeah. I mean, absolutely terrible. The first person to be done at the draft should have the best team, in absolutely. my in my opinion. I, I agree, especially with the, sitting on the Swanigan pitch with I mean, when your last when your last two picks are for fifty dollars each, you should have the best team. I agree. Rusty had a really good mid game in the draft. Absolutely. He, he did, but it's just he didn't. I don't know. Taking people like Swanigan, Buddy Hill, Thon Maker, just those those aren't picks that in my. Thon is a surprise though. They seemed high on him, and then again they go back to usual Milwaukee stuff. Where last game, John Henson took the most minutes home. Where uh, preseason it was no. No John Henson mentioned it was all Greg Monroe and Thon Maker. Um, so ahead. Uh, I mean, but still, I mean, for for him to have that much money with the players available at that time. I agree. I don't think Wesley Matthews was really late. That was one guy that I really liked. But who who ended up getting Wes Matthews? Was it Josh? I think Josh. I yeah. Josh. I see a Matthews right there. I'm just, I'm just gonna say Josh did. But that was that was that was all week week one. Uh, week two will have much better numbers because there is more games. Obviously, here in week two, week one is done. Uh, matchup of the week will be me and Brandon. Absolutely. Um, I mean, one and two from week one. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, to me, it's got to be power. Um, I think my team overperformed, um, so I have myself losing seven four one in this matchup to Brandon. Would you? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it depends. Your team. Mario Carroll turned out to be a decent pickup. The bonus has been good in the absence of Miles Turner, but that's definitely going to change. Oh, of course. I mean, I mean, Alan Crabb, Alan Crabb hasn't changed. Uh, Kelly Oubre was a good pickup um, in the lift. Just coming off the first two games, he's getting a lot of minutes, yeah. um, mostly for his defensive abilities. He's playing, he's playing good. Just not second game sucked on the offensive side, but he's good. as long as he keeps getting 30 minutes like he has. Team as bad as the No, that that's for sure. I mean, I have a few people overperforming, but which way are you going in this matchup? I'm going, I mean, you got to go with Brandon. I, I mean, I, I, I a little bit more consistency than yours does. Oh, no doubt about that. Uh, a prediction just outside no, of Brandon. No, 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 six, five, oh, okay, a close one. A close one here in the matchup of the week. Okay, we're going with uh, Rusty playing Santana, a matchup of bottom feeders according to power rankings last week. Um, right now, uh, whew, Santana's up 10-0-2. I don't think that stands. I think Rusty wins. Um, I think it will be close, though. Um, but it's going to be an 8-3-1. I know that doesn't sound close, um, but I think it's a close 8-3-1. One thing to note, though, Santana's team was very injured last week, for example. Um, Chris Paul, he has, he has both Morris's out, although Marcus Morris, depending on, I'm not huge on Tatum this early preseason, granted he hasn't been doing good, but uh, I'm sure if they want to at least try to make playoffs, they, they'll probably go back to Marcus, but um, he has had a lot of injuries. Sure, I mean, he lost a big name in Chris Paul, and he's supposed to be out, what, two to four more weeks? Yeah, I, I just remember looking at one point, he had four red players, like his whole bench was red, so yeah, that definitely, definitely hinders your stats. Yeah, and I mean, it doesn't look like he's trying to switch any of those players out, so. No, staying true. I like it. Prediction? Nah. As long as they're injured, I mean, you, you got to go with Rusty. Whenever somebody has that many injuries. Oh, sure. We'll, we'll go Rusty 7 uh, 4 Okay. Right, that's not bad. 7 4 one 7 4 one There you go. We got uh, Sean Brown Land Part 2 taking on the Metapods. Uh, Metapod's currently up six zero six. A very good matchup outside good match. outside of matchup of the week, actually. Um, I don't know how many players they both have playing this week, but I think the Metapod's rebounds and wins a very close one six five one. I, I, yeah, I would have to say I like I like the Metapod's a little bit more. Um, just they have a 
there are more people that are my style. I don't know. Lonzo's been playing pretty decent to start out. I don't know if he's going to keep these rebounds. Like, I'm looking at him right now. Yeah, his rebounds are through the roof. 1.73 pointers. Uh, I'm not a Lonzo fan, but uh, 1.73s, 9.3 rebounds, 8.7 assists, and 13.3 points. That I mean, that ain't gonna stay. No, I don't, I don't think I don't think he's shooting the ball very well. Um, the the more elite teams he plays, the more he gets locked up. Yeah, but I mean, anytime you have you have James Harden, that's automatically going to carry you. Tyreek Evans is playing pretty decent. Uh, Vucevic, Gortat. The Vucevic's um, playing out of his yeah, mind. Yeah, those are definitely. Vucevic and Gortat are just consistency players. They're not going to get you across the board stats, but they're going to get you consistent double doubles. Uh, Michael Kidjokas, how he should come back, I think. Yeah, I'm going with Victor on another, another 7 Ooh, okay, I like that. All right, moving on to the uh, wannabe freaking Greeks playing uh, Team Nance here. Um, pretty, pretty lame matchup, honestly. Um, but I, I, I agree with you. I'm gonna go Cody 7-4-1. Yeah, this is just a, this is just a learning experience <coughs> for Kyle, uh, being new to the auction draft, being new to I think new to fantasy basketball in general. Yeah. Um, big learning curve on names. Uh, these shooters don't, aren't necessarily don't necessarily carry over into fantasy. So freaks and geeks going with an eight, three, one. Ooh. Yeah, you gonna predict the triple double in any, any of these matchups? Nah. Nah. Oh, I got I got one coming up for you. Um, we got Heath playing Josh this week, which I think is a, a good matchup as well. Josh. Um. Man, you, you guessed exactly who I have circled. Um, but I but I think Heath gets the triple double this week. Um, ben Simmons has been very close, and I think Draymond could get one as well. So I'm gonna say one of those two get one. But I think Josh still wins seven five zero. If I was Heath, I'd be buying season pass just to watch uh, Embiid and Ben Simmons play every night. I've already watched two of their games, and they are fun, fun to watch. But I don't know. I like Josh's team. Um, Looking at it, I mean, when Miles Turner comes back, Chris Dunn's probably going to get minutes. Uh, I don't know. The Bulls suck, so they're probably going to go with the younger guy. But yeah. Kyle Kuzma's playing really good. He's got West Matthews. Steven Adams has been playing very good as of late. His uh, last game was phenomenal. I don't know why you still have Gorgie Dane. Hopefully this changes by the time you watch the video. Um, but yeah, he dropped yeah. he dropped Andre Robertson today, so that was that was a good drop. I mean, you, you, have, you have some good stuff. Um, know much about this Jarrell Martin guy either, but um, yeah, looking at his team, like I like Josh's team, pretty consistent throughout, good quality players. I'm going with Josh's team on a seven four one. Hey man, you you were close, you were close with me, but we both picked Josh. Um, we're going with Dominic and Callie, um, a rookie going up against a a seasoned veteran. She took the year off last year, but she's always been very well in this league. Um, coming off a tie last week, uh, I just think the the rookie loses again, and I think Kelly wins 7 for one Dropping dimes, dropping dimes. Uh, I, I'm going to have to go with Kelly as well, just looking down her team. If you go to it, uh, aside from Zach Collins, uh, everybody else is consistent. You pretty much know what they're going to give you. Uh, you can't really go wrong with that against uh, somebody with multiple inconsistency like most teams in our league right now, me included. Um, the consistency has to come out and win with a... Uh, I'd say that one's going to be another 7-4-1. Hey, we finally agree on one. But especially with the way Russell's playing. We touched on it before we talked about the video. D'Angelo's pl oh, wow. playing out of his mind. And he should be. He's got a point to prove. And then we go into your matchup. Playing the no-names. But like you said, it should be the big names. Um, playing Austin. Um... I usually would expect Brett to bounce back after such a bad week, but I just don't think it happens this week. Um, it's it's hard to predict you to lose when you're sitting beside of me. But I'm going with Austin eight three one. I think Brett struggles out the gates here. Until um, like I said, I have Jadosik and I have Nick out, but uh, until I have Derek Favors, um, Marvin Williams, Trevor Ariza, until they start doing at least half of what they're supposed to be doing, I'm gonna get blown out every week. But I'm sticking to I'm sticking to consistency with what I drafted. So as of right now, I'm looking at an eight an eight three one. In Austin's favor as well. Yeah, oh yeah, in Austin's favor. Until my team starts doing better, then I'm then I'm smacking everybody. 
but until then, y'all better, y'all better make a lead. The other way, the way he's making it sound, he's gonna struggle here early. So you better make a lead quick. So what we're saying is the bottom. If you're in the bottom four, it's not very well. Uh, we'll look at standings before we move on the power rankings. Um, we got Rusty leading the uh, well, Rusty and Austin Todd in the Jordan division, both at seven four ones. Um, Sean leading the Shaq division, nine two one. Heath half a game back, nine three zero. Uh, myself leading the Kobe division at an eight three one record. Got two and a half games on Josh and Callie. Um, I don't think I don't think I'll con continue to ease my way through the Kobe division. I do think I'll be a top three team in the Kobe division. Um, I don't think Rusty stands a chance to stay up top right now in the Jordan division. Um, I like either yourself, Victor, or uh, Austin to come out on top of that division. I don't see Santana making any noise. I think he's going to struggle out the gates, and if he doesn't make some moves, he might be a bottom four team because it might be too late when his team gets healthy and then the Shaq division. I can see Sean staying up there just like I could see Heath staying up there, but also they have Brandon in that division. So that's a very tough division looking at it. And I mean, you can't sleep on Cody, but if he does, if he sleeps through the regular season, like he's known for, then he won't compete in the Shaq division. But I think the Shaq division is a toss up. Yeah, absolutely. We need to be, anytime we get trades, we need to be getting feedback on trades. And if you're not going to counter, stay away from life. But that league definitely is a little bit closer because I don't know if Brandon's will be one every week right now, especially because multiple injuries happen and things are going to settle in. And a lot of players, a lot of players have hot weeks to start out where their averages are going to drop. But, yeah, that's definitely, the Shaq is definitely going to be really even one throughout the year. And Jordan and Kobe both, they each have about three teams that are going to be fairly competitive throughout the whole thing. So, luckily, leagues are pretty even throughout. Yeah, if you had to make a bold prediction here in week one. Who do you think the four teams that doesn't make the playoffs? Oh, four teams that don't make the playoffs? Yeah. I don't know if I'd go four. Um, well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's how it is this year. Uh, Bottom four don't make it. Uh, well, I guess I gotta say, I gotta say Nance and Breaker of Chains, Dominic, or, but if my team doesn't start playing better, I'll have to ship out some people, but I'm definitely a bottom team as of numbers, as of right now, and then Looking at it, I would have to go Rusty's team below Santana's if we're just going out of power rankings. But, um, yeah, that's going to be my bottom four. I don't know. I think Cody sleepwalks through this year. And I think he, he checks his team too late. I think Cody doesn't make the playoffs. I don't think Kyle makes the playoffs because his activity so far has been really down in week one. And that's something that you don't want to do in fantasy basketball. It's not fantasy football where you just get to set your lineup for one day and it's done. Um, I don't like Santana right now to make the playoffs, and that's not how he drafted. It's just how his team looks. Um, like I said, I, I think it'll be too too little too late if he doesn't make some moves. And I'm going to say Rusty don't make the playoffs. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to count Dominic in into the playoffs this year. I, I, don't, I, I agree. I'm not going to say he's in, but I think it'll be close. There's, there's, through week one, there's multiple things we could throw in the bottom for him. It's serious idea. Sure. I mean, I, th I think owners like myself and yourself, you know, you had a bad week one, but I mean, if, if you have to do it, you're going to make moves to get yourself to a better team, even if it has to give up a bigger name. You know, you see some of these owners that, you know, won't give up like a Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. I mean, I, I don't know who these players are on, but sure, it is. Absolutely. Oh, oh absolutely. Let's try to get this display capture off here. <clears throat> and move on to power rankings here. Move this up. I wonder if everybody could have, hmm. everybody's been able to hear everything I've been saying. I sure hope so. I hope so too. I've been talking a lot. Yes, you have. I don't know why it's not showing up here. See, so y'all better be watching these videos. Here we go. Power rankings here. Have Brandon up at one, uh, myself at two, Austin <laughs> at three. Top three is honestly very shocking. It's three names you usually don't see in the top three. I've been really bad lately at fantasy. Uh, you don't usually see Brandon up here, and you definitely didn't see Austin up here last year. Um, but then you go to a more familiar name who usually flirts at the top all year long in Victor. Uh, Absolutely. Um, you have a Cali team that, if she's not at the top, she's always middle of the pack. She never 
It's usually at the bottom. Yeah, it's usually close middle. Victor usually plays close upper middle almost every single year. And then you got Sean in six, um, being the champion. Uh, I guess he can't complain being in the top half um, in power. I mean, he's won his, he won his matchup really well, but you'll expect him to make some moves because that's how Sean is. He'll he'll make sure he competes in every matchup. So always expect him high in power. <clears throat> and then you move to Josh, who, let's be honest, usually is a middle, lower type of person that's played in fantasy so far in this league. Um, then you got Heath. Like I said, he didn't he didn't have a good week, being an eighth, um, winning non three zero over Kyle, but as you can tell, Kyle was last. So, but Heath usually does well. I think his I think his team does get better over Tom, and he'll be a top five team throughout the year. I agree. Oh, thanks, man. Whew. I'm glad I got a backup back here. Uh, you got Dominic coming in at ninth. Um, I I mean it's your first week. You could have did what Kyle did. You're over some big names in the league, you know, Cody, uh, Santana, and Brett. Sorry, Rusty and Kyle. But until y'all prove yourselves, I can't say y'all are big names. Oh. Um, when I put him, when I put him as a on the bottom four, that's just kind of nothing against. It's just uh, you would expect the, you would expect Cody, um, especially Santana, since he was a runner up last year. Just Rusty, myself, just people with experience to be able to make some make some moves a little bit worthwhile. The rookies don't always. I struggle either get in a little bit too late or uh, make some hasty moves a little bit too early. But sure, but I mean, not a bad first week. but to what I'm hearing rumors around the league, Dominic is trying to make trades. Um, he sent me a good quality like a counter counter offer. It was not nothing but so yeah, absolutely. We're glad to have somebody like that in the league. So it's good to see that he's trying at least. I don't think he he sent me anything yet. Um, he where he was playing last week. I'm sure he didn't want to send over some of his players, but. He's been really active. Um, you got Cody here in tenth. Um, it's a surprise, and then it's a not surprise. It's the regular season, so that's why it's not a surprise to me. Then you got Rusty in eleventh, had the big win over yourself, but just a terrible week. I mean, not a game was ugly. It was it was super ugly, and and I remember we were talking to Rusty over Xbox this week, and uh, he was talking high about his team. Well, being eleventh in power is nothing to be talking high about. That happened. It all. You think you balling? <laughs> when, when you're really not. Then you got Santana, uh, runner up in 12th. Like I said, that's that was, a, that was a shock on the pole. But until he makes some moves and gets more people playing, it's he's going to continue to stay down here. Yeah, you're definitely. If you wait too long, but luckily the Chris Paul. Luckily most of his injuries are only going to be about month injuries. But still, you don't want to you don't want to lose a massive lead where it's hard for you to get back up on the top because. Especially the three divisions where you're going to be able to have a buy. Like, three people are going to have buys now. Yeah. Um, that definitely helps. It, it does, but, I mean, like you said, I mean, if you... don't want to be a bottom four, you get kicked out. I mean, the thing is, is if you start off losing 2-9-1 in your first four matchups, I mean, that's going to be hard that, That's that's going to be hard to come back up. Because, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you're going to be last. But you never know. Then you got Brett here in 13th who had a terrible week. Pretty, pretty big shocker because... Um, like like we said, he he was the most voted on in the poll. I thought my team was nice. Yeah, you thought. Yeah, like I said, Derek Favors, Marvin Williams, Trevor Reza, multiple dudes, not producing half of what they're supposed to. So, Ugh. now now my thing is, say they have another, let's say they have two more bad weeks. Those three players you just named, when, how trigger happy do you get after how that? Trigger, how trigger happy do I get? Oh, every single one of you will be receiving trades, <laughs> and they will be but. <laughs> Hopefully you work with me, and we come out at a common ground. <laughs> now, would you consider dropping any of those three? Uh, I don't think Ariza is droppable. Ariza is not droppable, dude. He's one of the few players in the league. I, I expect him to get back up to um, two three-pointers, two skills a game, because every year there's like only like five or so players in the league that average those types of stats. So he he will get back up to that. His points his points are going to dip probably, but. He's never been a point where he's going to be with barely double digits, but he's going to get back up. Derek Favors, he's getting 28 minutes, but, I mean, he's scoring good. His rebounding sucks, but if he don't get back up, I'll drop any of them. Well, I mean, I still don't think you can drop Ariza. I think you could trade him to someone in our league. And the thing with Favors is you're right. I mean, he's getting decent minutes. He's just not rebounding the basketball. Marvin is one. If he's not hitting threes, he's going to get you five to six boards, which is quality above waiver, especially with averaging a couple threes. And, around the block and still like he does every year but you know if he keeps playing as bad as he is last game he got 16 minutes y'all may find him on the waiver 
Yeah, you're right. I mean, 16 minutes is hard to keep on a team. And then you got Kyle sitting here at last. Um, not a surprise, but I don't even know where he's at on this draft board. Oh. I mean, he drafted Westbrook, so you wouldn't think the person that drafts Westbrook would be last, considered he was on a good team last year. Uh, Marquise Chris, I think, has been underperforming for him so far. Um, I think he'll step, step it up. Wiggins has been playing pretty good. Uh, Foltz has been playing terrible. DeAndre Jordan's playing really good. I will I will say that. Um, Dirk is Dirk. Um, he has Miritich sitting out. Um, you got Levine sitting out. I mean, he's got some injuries, too. Um, Deadman's not playing well. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know when the panic button comes for owners. Everyone's different. But he might want to look to do something soon. Yeah, Marco, Markel Fultz is really underperforming, but he does have some big names to really lean on. With Russell, Wiggins, I mean, DeAndre Jordan, Dwayne Dedman was supposed to do a little bit more. Dirt should get you a little bit, but it, it just a very a very shooting guard, uh, very heavy team of people who get you points and threes and not much else, sitting with uh, J.R. Smith, Terrence Ross, Eric Gordon, uh, Caldwell Pope. Uh, I mean, you're right. He, I mean, a lot of points and a lot of threes, but zero across the board. Yeah. No yeah. I mean, when there's 12 categories, I mean, winning two of them is not going to do you any good. But that's also a rookie going for. I mean, sure. Those, I mean, those are names that they're good. They have their spot on the team. There's not too many spots. I mean, but when you're new to the league, I mean, you want to do some research before the draft, and maybe he just failed to do that. But it's a long season for sure. I mean, this was only week one. I don't want to overreact, I guess, to week one, but. No but it still should be looked at. But let's get into the trivia. Um, like I said, on draft day, we will vote on games. Uh, these are Wednesday's games, so get your answers to me before the first game starts. Um, each game is worth $2, uh, fantasy dollars, that is, not out of my pocket, $2. Um, each one you get right, you get $2. Each one you get wrong, you lose $2. You get them all right, you get an extra 5 You get them all wrong, you lose an extra 5 So the highest you can win is 25 and obviously the highest you can lose is 25 Remember, whoever correctly guesses the most games this year gets $50 in cash. So hopefully this makes all 14 owners participate. But, you know, if you continue to lose these games and you don't have fantasy dollars, you can't participate, obviously. Which which will suck if that happens to someone. But we'll start with Denver and Charlotte. Um, who do you like in that game? Denver, absolutely. <coughs> as long as Dennis Smith is back, and he should be. Dennis Smith, don't play for Denver. God, you're a noob. Can we, can we do a retake? Oh, God, we've been on this video forever. Oh, no retake. Who do you, who do you want in Denver and Charlotte? Okay, I'm with you. I'm going Denver as well. Are these your picks 100%? Yeah, 100%. Okay. I mean, this is, this is, this is, this, we're, we're recording, so. I'm going to take the opposite of the Grizz game. The Grizz game? We ain't even hit the Grizz game yet. Oh, I ain't talking about mine. Oh, my God. God. Yeah, I'm asking every time who you take it. All right, we got Minnesota and Detroit um, second game. I'm going Minnesota. I just like what their team is compared to Detroit. It's hard to go against Minnesota, especially against the Detroit team who's never, never really is a factor in the league. And if you missed the ending to the Timberwolves last game, go watch it. Fantastic finish. Illegal screen by Cat. Yeah. Hey, but the bank was open on a Sunday, so. PG ain't falling for no reason. Uh, PG's falling. PG, number two, two-way player in the league. <laughs> Don't sleep. All right. We got Houston at Philly. Houston losing T.O. Um, I don't know if this is a back-to-back. Oh, so, man, you want to redo this video? Yeah, That's their retake. They didn't use T.O. They lost Chris Paul. Um, but Philly, I don't know if this is a back-to-back -back game for Philly. If it is, Joe Embiid probably won't be playing unless he sits out the first one. But regardless, I think Philly's really good, but I'm going in favor of Houston. Yeah, it looks like they're up in the stats originally from, like, the original, like, 18-minute restriction or 20-minute restriction, like he was originally given. Looks like they're going to give him a little bit more each game instead and maybe just rest him every other game. I don't know how they're going to do it, but you got to go with Houston above pretty much anybody. Yeah, I mean, besides Golden State or Cleveland, uh, if you go with, I mean, if you're going to go with anybody else above Houston, you, I don't know, I question. Well, well, we'll see what people pick this week. And then we got Cleveland playing Brooklyn. Um, Cleveland got absolutely destroyed by Orlando in their last oh, game. God. And Brooklyn's actually looked really well this year. Their defense ain't very well, but their offense is awesome. Um, this game is being played in Brooklyn. 
But how can you go against LeBron? I'm, I'm going with LeBron. Yeah, we'll go with Cleveland. Hey, don't, don't sleep on Jeff Green. You're <coughs> in the second unit. Hey, man. Watch some games. Is learn some stuff. See you in the fantasy yet? No. No. Okay. So, we'll, we'll see if he gets out. <laughs> Brett, Brett wants him on his team, if you can't tell. He's picking him up. He's, he's picking him up tomorrow for a dollar. Yeah, no, actually $5. Oh, $5. five dollars. Yeah, All right, we got the Spurs playing the Heat. Um, I think this is actually going to be a good game. I don't know if White Sox playing, but uh, he didn't play any game any last week. Um, but they still won. I think all their games. I think they beat Minnesota without him, which is impressive. That is. Um, they are playing, like I said, in Miami. But how can you go against Greg Popovich? Give me the Spurs. He's one and one just looking right now. San Ana is two and oh. Uh, you got to go with the Spurs just because the Heat have not. They're still rolling between who they're starting between Kelly Olenek and James Johnson. Uh, Should be Olenek. He's playing pretty well. But yeah, Johnson's playing good they're too. Liking how he, they're liking how he rolls and he, he can pick and pop. That white side duel is more under him. But no, you got to go with the Spurs. Even without Kawhi, just. Hold on, well, that's that's gonna be the one we lose on. Um, your Pacers are playing the Thunder um, at Oklahoma City. Um, I think the Pacers are a better team than what people expected them to be this year. That's true. Uh, um, like I said, I don't know if they'll have Miles Turner on Wednesday. I mean, like I said, these are Wednesday's games. But I like the Thunder. They're playing at home. They lost a heartbreaker at home to Minnesota last night. But give me the Thunder. Yeah, I'll take Thunder. I gotta go against your favorite team. Got the. Grizz playing the Mavs at Dallas. Um, I think it's going to be a really good matchup. I think it's going to be a low-scoring affair considering the Grizzlies play really well, really, really well defense, but I'm going to go with the Grizz. Mm, it's smart. Grizz are 2-0. and Dallas is 3 as a 0-3. You and I like the Mavericks. I don't know. I like them. Hey, I'm glad, I'm glad we finally disagree on one of these games. I love Mike Conley, underrated point guard, but they're boring. Hey, Marcus has been playing good, too. Boring. Overdrafted and good draft pick. Um, you got the Jazz playing the awesome Phoenix Suns, Ooh. who uh, have lost two games by 40-plus points. They just fired their head coach. Um, Bledsoe won't be playing in this game, I would bet that. It'll be the post-Bledsoe era on Wednesday. It's going to be post-Bledsoe era today. It's at Phoenix. I don't think it matters. Um, give me the Jazz by 30. Yeah, D-Book might move the point guard, but yeah, give me the Jazz. Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. Um, Toronto playing the Warriors. Um, Warriors are actually struggling this year. Um, Raptors playing pretty well ball, but this game is in Golden State. Golden State don't lose at home, and if they do, it's because something wrong happened for sure, but give me the Warriors. Toronto is 2-0, but you just you can't, say, you can't go against the Warriors. No, nah, not, not not at home. I mean, raps are good. I love the raps. I love Lowry. I love the Rosen, but you got to go with the Warriors. All right, and then we got the last game of the night. Uh, I think it's a 10:30 tip-off. Um, Wizards are playing the Lakers. Um, I don't know how many of you've hopped on the uh, Lonzo Ball bandwagon. I have not. I think John Wall locks up Ball. You see what happens when somebody locks him up. Yeah, he's. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, he did. If you didn't see that, it's something to go watch. Um, I think John Wall's going to be all over him. Um, I think Gortat will have a big game. No, uh, I don't think Lopez can guard Gortat. I think Lopez gets in foul trouble. Give me the Wizards. I don't know. I think Lopez, I think Lopez can guard Gortat. Lopez good, but. Man, Polish hammer though, good, man. I like the Polish. Man, he's good. I, like the I hate Bradley Bill. Hey, man, he he can. He, <laughs> Who was on this right, team? We'll go, I, we'll go with, I like the Wizards. I should have worn my Washington Wizards basketball shirt, but I didn't. Man, you should have, man. Oh, Survey Corps shirt, you know. Yeah. You said you want Wizards? Yeah, I'm going Wizards. So we disagreed on one game, so good luck to you. Yeah, Van Wagon. Yeah, Van Wagon. Gotta go, Van gotta go with the records. Um, I think that's all for this week, unless you got any side notes. Um. Uh, Alright, we definitely need to be active on the league board. Uh, people need to post messages. If you have anybody you want to trade, if you have anybody you're thinking about trading you don't like, uh, you want to pick up on, post messages. Create uh, Anybody can create a poll. Yep. Uh, create a poll. Um, yeah, like I said already, send feedback on trades. I mean, if somebody, we got to stop this um, absolute bum trading stuff. 
but if, if you don't like a trade, send back it, decline it, and write back at least why you didn't like it. And if, if you're just not interested in trading, say, I'm not interested in trading. But if you really are thinking about it, send a counter. Send it back with something different. Let's just get a little bit more activity going in the second week, try to move that throughout the year. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I think I've been in this league for a while, and I know a lot of people start off trades with a terrible trade. It's just some people, their way of showing interest. And if you don't know that, the other person won't counter. And they'll just decline it and probably laugh. You know, if you're sending, let's say, John Lore for, you know, Cat. You know, if you're interested in Cat, send a message in the trade and be like, I'm just sending this to, so you can counter. Just like he was saying, just pretty, <coughs> just outside of sending a trade, pretty much be, be responsive with the person, talk to them. You know, any of these people, maybe besides Cody, won't answer your text message quickly. Um, but anyone will respond to you. If you want someone's phone number, just yeah, ask. You can have mine. Yeah, I mean, just just ask. Um, I know the first thing Heath did after we drafted the next day, he sent me a message and asked for everyone's phone numbers. I mean, you know, that's someone that's looking to trade probably and just wants to probably go through them before you even send the trade. But just be active, like he said. Um, if you got if you got a roster spot available on your team, I didn't look at that. Pick someone up. You know, play the waiver wire. You never know. Take a chance. Um, what I hear, that's how Sean. That's a big part of why Sean won last year. It was for the rookies. You're right. It's a it's a good strategy that you know we've had actually really good activity on waiver wires every day almost. It has been very good. Multiple days of at least like six pickups. Yeah. So I mean, those are really well. Um, but vote on the poll. Watch the video. If you don't like it, just tell me. Tell me some things we need to do differently. But just give us feedback. That's all we want. Anything else before we leave? No. All right. Well, good luck in week two.